So Acts 2, New International Version, um, the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to the rest, came to the rest of them, came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. Thank you, Jada. The second reading from 1 Corinthians 12 is going to be read by myself. So, from verse 1. Now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing different distinguishing between spirits to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and to still another the interpretation of tongues all these are the work of one and the same spirit and he distributes them to each one just as he determines now unity and diversity in the body just as the body though one has many parts but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not the hand, I, am, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God had placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I do not need you. Or the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lack it, so that there should be no division in the body but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church first all the apostles, second prophets, their teachers, their miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, of different kinds of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, 
Do all work miracles? Do all have the gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. Praise the Lord. That's the word of the Lord. Thank you. So we're going to call Nicola, who's going to preach. So we're just going to stretch our hands forth as she ministers. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our sister, O Lord, who's given the word of God today, O Lord. Father, let her not speak of her own ability, but from you, O Lord. Father, use her for your glory. We thank you, we honor you, and we receive the word with open hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, let's try again. Good morning, church. Good morning. Amen. <clears throat> it's an exciting day, isn't it? Who's excited? Who loves Pentecost? I love Pentecost. Now, last night, I had written out what I was going to say today. And then, who was watching the Luton game? Woo. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, well done, Luton. And I was keeping an eye on it. Although, I'm a wannabe Luton fan, really, aren't I? Because I'm a Leicester fan. Through and through. <laughs> We're not doing too well. So, I was listening, keeping an eye on that. And I was praying about today, and I felt that God was really saying, Nicola, don't do what you've written. So, yeah, does God ever do that to you? Has God done that? Like, no, you're not going to do what is planned in life. And so, obviously, the first thing I did was phone Gemma. Because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I wanted to check. And she was like, well, you're best listening to God then, haven't you? So we're going to listen to God this morning and see how it goes. So um, I've been thinking about Pentecost and uh, we are going to do a bit of both passages, but it's Pentecost, so we need to focus on Pentecost, don't we? And I was thinking about Pentecost, and it had been 50 days since the resurrection. And it had been 10 days since Jesus ascended into heaven. And what were his disciple disciples, what were his followers doing? They were waiting they were waiting. How many of us here find it really hard to wait? <laughs> it's so hard, isn't it? I find it incredible. I am not a pa You know, some people are just naturally patient and serene. <laughs> not two words you can use to describe me at all. Jared's laughing because he knows this is true. Um, <clears throat> he sees me in my work life on a daily. I struggle with those things immensely they're not natural to me maybe they are natural to you and you're like I don't know what she's talking about but I imagine quite a lot of us struggle with it don't we of just waiting on God and I've spoken up here lots of times about it before where I've tried to do things my own way I've gone God I'm fed up of waiting I'm gonna do it and then it's always a catastrophe God always uses it because he is an awesome God but it always goes wrong and so his disciples were waiting they were waiting for this free gift that they had been promised but they didn't really know what this free gift would look like they weren't really aware of quite what it was going to be like and I like to think that they were probably a little bit shocked when all of a sudden it came upon them like a rushing wind and there were suddenly flames on their heads who here would be a little bit shocked if that happened <laughs> who also would be like this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> it would be so cool and so I was thinking about this and I was thinking I'd written everything and I was thinking sometimes we look for so many answers for things don't we but sometimes we just can't know the answers our God is too big he is too awesome we can't know every little thing but I do know something I know that he is an awesome God. Amen? I know that God loves each and every one of us so much that he rescued us through his son. And I also know that he didn't just leave us when his son went to heaven, that he sent a gift of himself in the Holy Spirit, and we are all welcome to receive that gift. And this gift is so important. If we look at God as being love and as perfect, does God give us rubbish gifts? Nothing God gives us is rubbish. It is only the possible bestness, that's not a real word, the bestness of God that he gives us. He doesn't give us whatever's left over. He gives us the first. 
And I love this passage in Corinthians, though it's a really big one. You could do a whole preaching series on just this passage, couldn't you? And it talks about the importance of us using the gift and the fact that we are all so varied, aren't we? Have a look round right now. Have a look round all the people that you're near. We are all so different and we all have such different gifts and Paul goes on in the passage to give an example of some important underline some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and sometimes we think that's a definitive list and it is not Paul very clearly gives us an example of what some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is. I do not claim to know all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit because there's only one person that knows all the gifts of the Holy Spirit and that is the Lord, the creator, isn't it? And so we need to remember that when we're thinking about this passage. And at the moment, there are over, I had to Google it because <laughs> over 8 billion people alive on this planet right now. That is a number that is too hard to think about, isn't it? Eight billion. And, you know, we think about in our, life, uh, in our own lives, can you possibly count all the people that you know the name of in your life? You can't, can you? It's just too big. Not any two of us are given the same gifts of the Spirit. Not either, none of two people are ever going to be given the same gifts. They're never going to be worked out in the same way. God is that awesome. So in church today, we are so varied. We all have different backgrounds. I'm a Midlander through and through. I, that means sometimes I say things that are a little bit weird to everyone here. I understand. It also means that I am used to my culture in the Midlands and we do things a little bit differently. We're all from different cultures, aren't we? We all have different interests. What interests do you have? I'm looking right now. I actually don't know one of your interests. But Phil, sorry Phil to pick on you. Phil is a keen painter. He's awesome. Can everyone paint here? No. Stuart loves singing in his choir, don't you Stuart? And he's an awesome singer. Can everyone sing here? I definitely can't sing. Um, we're all different. We all have different interests. We have different talents. And yet, we all are one body. We're all one body. We should be functioning as one here this morning. Does that mean we're like robots? Actually, the beauty is that we're all unique. We're all completely different. And so we all have different roles to play. Um, God gives gifts to individuals, the right gifts to the individuals at the time that he has determined and for the purpose that he has determined. So God gives us gifts at the time that he has determined and for the purposes that he has determined. So what is a spiritual gift? Some of you might be looking at me and saying, great, the Holy Spirit gives gifts, but what on earth are you on about? So the spiritual gift is simply a gift that God has given you through the Holy Spirit that is used to exalt, uh, exalt Christ, so to lift Jesus' name high and to bless other people. So it's simple, isn't it? It's to lift Jesus' name high and it's to bless other people. It's not a secret thing we keep hidden. It's not a secret thing we keep hidden. I don't know if you know this really old hymn. I might have even mentioned it here before. I learned it in India and it talks about our gifts from God if you do not lose it you will surely use it if you have a talent use it for the Lord does anyone know that one no it, I think it's really really old if you do not lose it you will surely use it if you have a talent use it for the Lord God does not give us gifts through the Holy Spirit for us to sit on and be like great I'm really good at that and I'm going to keep it all to myself it's to promote Christ, it's to lift Christ high, and it's to bless our brothers and sisters and the rest of this world. So then, <clears throat> let's get into Corinthians a little bit. Paul needed to remind the Corinthians, it's about God, it's not about us. God knows 
what is important for us to have. He knows what spiritual gifts we need to have for where we are placed. It's not about, oh, I really, I'd really like to be able to sing like Parker at the front. Oh, um, I really want that. Jealousy isn't a part of it. Like God has not given me gifts to be able to sing at the front. <laughs> Definitely not. Parker's got a beautiful voice, hasn't he? Yeah. And he can use it prophetically. And that's another gift that he's combined there to pull in. And so I'm going to give an example of that where sometimes we get a little bit stuck on things. I think in church life, often we look at one spiritual gift and we put it above other spiritual gifts. And that's a big no-no because there are so many spiritual gifts that they are, I can't count them. And that is praying in tongues. I think sometimes we get stuck on praying in tongues and we think we've not really received the gift of the spirit unless we pray in tongues. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. It doesn't say you have to have that. We all are different and we're all gifted differently. And so I knew about praying in tongues from when I was very small. In my church, it was normal like it is here that people prayed in tongues. And I wanted to pray in tongues when I gave my life to Jesus. And I was like, okay, and I'd read... Um, has anyone read Jackie Pullinger, Chasing the Dragon? Yeah. And in it, she talks about when she received tongues and that someone had a bowl of oranges and they prayed for her and then she spoke in tongues. And I was like, oh, okay, great. So I'm just going to say to God, right, I want to speak in tongues and then he's going to give me that gift and that's that. And so I was like, okay, God, here I am. I'm ready. I'm going to pray in tongues now. And nothing happened. And I, and I continued to do that. And I saw other people that were praying in tongues. And I was like, oh, but they can do it. So it must be easy. Why can't I do it? And do you know what? I was 14 when I gave my life to God. It wasn't until I was 31 and I'd let go of that jealousy that God gifted me with being able to pray in tongues. That's a long time, isn't it? And you see, I didn't want that gift to promote Christ. I didn't want that gift to bless others. What I wanted was to look like everyone else, to fit in, to be able to be like, yeah, I've got that gift of the Holy Spirit. But that isn't what a gift of the Spirit is about. And so I had to let go of that. And eventually, God obviously did decide it was time. And it was on the morning of when I got confirmed, which I was doing in obedience because I didn't really want to do it. But I was being obedient to what was needed of me at the time. If you want to know more about that story, you can ask me. Um, and so I think that often, and I've had other struggles as well, but that was one example. We sometimes look at what gifts other people have got and we go, God, I want that gift. It's not fair. I want that. And do you know what? That is blocking the Holy Spirit, and using your gifts that God has already given you or wants to give you because you're so focused on the other person that you're forgetting to look at you and look to God first. And so I just want to take um, a minute now for maybe if you want to bow your heads and we're just going to pray and we're just going to ask um, God for forgiveness of anything where we've been jealous of other people's gifts, where we've put a blockage on it where we've not been open because we've gone, God, I don't want that gift. I want another gift. And actually, before we pray for any gifts this morning, we want to repent of that. And we want to say, God, I'm sorry that you are the author and perfecter of our faith. And it's up to you. Um, so let's just pray. Father God, we thank you that you are mighty. Father God, we thank you that you know everything. We thank you that you are perfect, that all things are in your timing and at your will. We're sorry, God, that we don't always get it right, that sometimes we let jealousy cloud our emotions. Lord God, we just repent now of any time where we have been ungrateful for the gifts that you've given us or we've hidden them away or we've been jealous of other people's and wanted theirs instead of ours. We thank you, God, that you forgive us in all of that. Amen. And so, oh, wrong page. God has placed 
all of the parts together in this church. It might be that you have been here for 60 years. Oh, no, we've not been around 60. Have we been around 60 years? Yeah, we have. It's about coming to that, isn't it? You might have been here 60 years. This might be your very first day here, but you are all a part of this body. You are all as important as each other and you all have wonderful gifts that the Spirit gives to be a working member of that body. So this morning, I'm actually not going to go on for much longer. We are going to spend some time um, just praying and expecting. Those disciples, those first people were waiting. They were waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. And so before that, I want us to think, maybe close your eyes. I want you to think, is there any spiritual gifts that God has given you that you are aware of? So if people are still struggling a little bit, I'll give you an example. So one of my spiritual gifts is pastoring. I like people. I enjoy spending time with people. But God's given me a gift of pastoring that goes far beyond my own capabilities because I would probably want to kick people at a certain point and that's being honest but God gives me compassion and a pastoring heart to be able to go beyond that to continue in that to pursue people in that and you see that's where I stop and God goes on there's a definite end of me and of God taking over and that is a spiritual gift so I would just encourage you to close your eyes this morning just think about it think about any spiritual gifts that you know God has given you and if you haven't got any, that's okay, because we're going to pray about that in a minute. But just think about it and think about how you are employing those gifts, how you are using those gifts to exalt Christ and to bless others. So now for the exciting bit, what I think is exciting. We are going to pray this morning and we are going to pray with expectation. Um, does anyone know the gospel song on the day of Pentecost? No? Auntie will know it. On the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me, fire, 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 fire fall on me. On the day of Pentecost, oh fire fall on me. And we're going to pray that this morning. We're going to pray, God, Holy Spirit, fire fall on me. I am here. I want to receive your gifts. What have you got to give me that I may exalt Christ and bless others? And so um, we're going to pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon this place in a minute. We all are different. We're all different members of the body. And so we're going to do it in different ways, however we feel it's this morning. I really felt God saying to me, that today, as a church, he wants us to give ourselves to him in prayer, to give ourselves to God in prayer, that we need only to ask and he will deliver. We need only ask and he will deliver through his spirit. Jesus's friends, the people who loved him, what were they doing after he died and was ascended? They were waiting, they were watching, and they were waiting. And so we need to have expectant hearts. And when I was reading about this, someone had written, and I thought this was a brilliant line, for God's sake, take a risk in prayer. For God's sake, take a risk in prayer. So we are going to pray.